I'm Lauren LeBlanc, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the 2022 Brooklyn Book Festival's Virtual Festival Day with a conversation between Mieko Kawakami and Camilla Shamsi. Our program is called This Woman's Work, and um, I'm going to offer some biographies right now. Mieko Kawakami is the author of the internationally best-selling novel Breasts and Eggs, a New York Times Notable Book of the Year, and one of Time's Tim best books of 2020. Born in Osaka, Kawakami made her literary debut as a poet in, 2020, in 2006 and published her first novella, My Ego, My Teeth, and the World in 2007. Her writing is known for its poetic qualities and its insights into the female body, ethical questions, and the dilemmas of modern society. She's received numerous prestigious literary awards in Japan, and her most recent book is All the Lovers in the Night. Kamala Shamsi is the author of several previous novels, most recently Home Fire, which won the Women's Prize for Fiction, was long listed for the Booker Prize, and was a finalist for the International Dublin Literary Award, the Costa Novel Award, and the DSC Prize for South Asian Literature, among other honors. She was raised in Karachi and lives in London. Her novel Best of Friends comes out in September. Thank you both for being here today. Both of you have written terrific books from very different points of view about friendship. And I think that that's a good starting place for talking about um, the women's place and changing roles in society. Amala's book looks at two dear childhood, longtime friends who grew up together in Pakistan and who now are adults 30 years later in London. Mieko's book, um, All the Lovers of the Night, is looking at a, a very different French set of friendships. Her central character, Fuyoko, is a very solitary copy editor who's a freelancer, who does not go into an office, and whose friendships are um, in many ways very isolated. And she herself is finds herself in a lot of positions of com losing confidence and building it throughout the course of the novel. I wonder if you both could talk about why you chose to consider friendship as a means to talk about the changing roles of women in society today and how th that has changed over time. Kamala, if you'd like to begin, that would be great. And then followed by Mieko. Um, thank you, Lauren. Um... I've long wanted to write a novel that had friendship at, at its center, primarily because the friendships in my life are very central to how I live. But in fiction, friendship is often the side note or the sub story rather than the main event itself. Um, and what I discovered was if you write a novel about two girls becoming women over the space of 30 years, Inevitably, what you're also writing about is women in society, women at a certain moment in time, and their changing relationship to power and themselves and all those things that come along with it. It just becomes mm -hmm. inevitable, really. And, and just to add, one of the things I was interested in was writing about women who, as they go through life, actually do become quite powerful. Because I was interested really in talking about what it is to be a woman with power um, mm -hmm. and the ways in which gender and in, in their case, race and migrant status works with, you know, and against the power that they manage to get in the world. Yeah, I think that that issue of, of power is another pres very present role also in Mieko's book as well, in terms of the powerlessness that her character feels um, and the way that it's expressed. And Mieko, I wonder if you could talk about the role of friendship in your book and the idea of power dynamics as well, which I think are very much at play in your novel too. Mm. あの、あの、友情を描くっていうことはすごく友情というのはみんな馴染みがあるもんなんですけれども、友情というものを深く掘り下げて書くことで、それはやっぱりその社会に so this net so okay so that just Camilla mentioned that they and I had it very interesting talking about the friendship 
uh, as she said that the, the friendship, you know, while you know, writing about the friendship, and then uh, it goes, friendship itself is a very familiar thing uh, to me too. But uh, you know, when you think about deeply about the friendship and write about that, and then it's actually no way that we have to touch what's going on in the society, the world, what's really going on. We, we have to focus, uh, you know, see that. 私たち多くの作家がそうだと思うんですけどあの友情とか恋愛とかあの親子関係というふうに普段はカテゴリーの中に押し込めているような関係を違う角度から光を当ててまだ名付けようのない知られていない感情とか、うん、そういう関係をあの描き出したいわけですね。So,、uh, as a writer,、uh, you know, we think about the friendship and like、uh, a relationship、uh, with, with the you know, gender relationship or, and also parent relationship. These are kind of,、uh, we kind of like have some fixed mind, fixed idea in the, and categorize these areas in a certain way. However, it is very、uh, interesting to shed the light in a different viewpoint、uh, looking at this、uh, categorized area. So, or it,、uh, the way that people even normally don't think in that particular way. So,、uh, it is interesting to、uh, search in that area, to that area. Right. No, I think that there is a moment towards the end of Kamala's novel, Best of Friends, where she lets her know that her parents know that if one of them dies, they have to let the friend know that, in fact, Zara's parent, one of Zara's parents have passed away, and to let Miriam know to take care of her. That sort of responsibility, I think, and is, is very present in your books because those are the dominant relationships that exist. And I think for these women who are dealing with various levels of challenges in their lives, the constant for them is friendship, despite the fact that they're dealing with,、um, in Kamala's book, a lot of issues regarding migration, asylum,、um, but also issues of the heart. You know, I think that it's also very much a, a book about romance in, in so many different fashions and how we negotiate those relationships. I think as much as power is something that we find challenging in our, in our kind of work environments, and it also is something that plays out in our friendships too. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much now. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I could ask Kamala if there was a moment you, in terms of the power dynamic and how you knew the way that you structured the book, balancing it between the youthful, you know, coming of age narrative at the opening. The critical kind of crisis that precipitates a rupture, and then taking the book to the present. How did you feel that you wanted to negotiate those challenges? Could you talk a little bit about the structure of the book? I always knew that, that my friendship novel was going to be very specifically a novel of childhood friendship, which I think is quite different to、uh, the friendship of adult life because it essentially forms almost before your character has formed. And certainly, before you really understand things like different values、um, or different ways of seeing the world. And so, I wanted to show these two girls really when we first meet them, when they're in the early stages of their friendship, they're 14 years old, they've already been friends 10 years. And I wanted to show what that friendship looked like in, at a sort of adolescent moment where perhaps the most import, important thing to them is. That you can trust someone with your secrets and that you both love the music and look of George Michael. But I think even in those early stages, it's very obvious that these are two very different women, girls, from very different families with different ideas of power and how they live in the world. And so, my question really to myself when I was starting it was so, what will happen to this friendship as the decades pass? And they become middle aged women with very clear views of the world. They're living in this particularly febrile political atmosphere that we've had in many countries of the world, 
um, in the last few years, and certainly Trump on one side of the Atlantic and Brexit on the other. Um, what happens to that friendship where on one hand, as you say, you know, as the character of Zara knows that the day one of her parents dies in Pakistan, the person who will break the news to her and fly home to Karachi with her holding her hand will be her closest childhood friend. But on the other hand, she also knows that this closest childhood friend now sees the world and acts in the world in ways that she just can't accept. So I want to, I'm going to read a quote, and I don't know that you necessarily have to translate it. And then I want to pose a question to Mieko, which is that, um, so I'm just going to read this passage of something from Pamela's work, which is perhaps that was the key to the longevity of, of childhood friendships, all those shared subtexts that no one else could discern. And perhaps shared subtext felt even more necessary when you both lived far away from the city of your childhood, that was itself the subtext to your lives. Childhood friendship really was the most mysterious of all relationships. And then all the lovers of the night, Yuko is dealing with, she has friends who are, she sees an old friend from childhood, Noriko, and their friendship is, is dependent on the fact that they're no longer a part of each other's lives. They have a shared history, but they can share secrets with one another of this time in their present life. And I wonder if you could talk about so, and and Fioko is a character who is lives now in Tokyo. She's far from where she grew up in Japan, and she's isolated. But she forms new friendships, and but they're very difficult to manage. I wonder if you could talk about the challenge of building new friendships, and also the tenuous nature of, of childhood friendship as well, which I think you explore in your book, Miyoko, which also has to do with another kind of childhood trauma that is that has to do with kind of sexual assault. Uh, so to find a friend in Tokyo is difficult. Is that your question? Yes, and how to find a friend and to also to kind of navigate between who she once was and who she's trying to become and what she wants from her new friendships mm -hmm. as opposed to the challenges she faced as a child. Mm -hmm. Tokyo っていうのは日本文学、日本の文学でお読みになった方は多分日本っていうのはやっぱり東京がすごくあのイメージとして大きいところがあると思うんですね。はい。So uh the talking about Tokyo and then thinking about the Japanese literature, the Tokyo is the uh, has a sort of like a one of the biggest images that the people can think about. え、東京っていうのはでもあのやっぱりその あの、もちろん日本の中心ではあるんですけど、やっぱり地方のね、方たちがみんな上京してきて作り上げた街なんですよね。Then and then again, you know, it's a center, Tokyo is a center of Japan. However, uh, as a matter of fact, that the Tokyo is basically uh uh made by the people coming from a rural area or other area of Tokyo. で、私たち日本の教育っていうのはその ま、そのどこであってもなんですけど、とにかくあの同調圧力がすごく強いんですよ。で、あのとにかく人と違うことをしない。で、あの自分の意見よりも人の顔色を見て自分のあのビヘイブとかを決めていく。それがやっぱり
、周りから干渉されない。<笑>うん、で、あのー、もう家とかね、近所付き合いとか、そういうのなしにして、人に干渉しないし、干渉されない。っていうのがその東京がえっ、ー、と人々に約束してくれる一つ目の役あなんかものなんですよね。So、uh, based on that the background, when people come、uh, from the local to Tokyo or rural area to Tokyo, one thing people expect is、uh, they can enjoy liberty, be themselves, and not to be、uh, com uh, compliance or you know, conform with The society needs. So be free out of that、uh, you know, limitation. That's what people expect in Tokyo. だから、そんな中で、あの冬子は、まあ、理想の日々を手に入れたとも言えるんですね。でもやっぱり人は孤独では生きていくのは時に辛いもので。うん、And then, then so、uh, in, a, in a way, I can say that Fuyuko got the ideal life in Tokyo. But the, to be alone is a、uh, challenging thing. So、uh, that is a struggle here. I feel in some ways, Fioko is more free in, in, to kind of explore and, and, and find herself than in some ways, Miriam and Zara, because to them, they're bound together and they can't, there's a, they, they, it's hard to, to navigate those challenges between their, their, Differences of values, which become stronger throughout the course of the novel.、Um, I wonder, Kamala, if you, could, if, if you could talk about that as well. Like, at what point do we know that,、um, or how do we outgrow friendship, or how does it change over time? And how, what did you want to convey about the lack of freedom within friendship and the, kind of, and the, and the freedom it does exist, that exists within it outside of kind of the idea of romantic love? And conventional society?、Um, well, I think any relationship, the, the longer it goes on and the more you know each other, in one way you could say there's less freedom because you can't hide, you can't pretend to be something who you aren't, and any old wounds, you know, the more, the more time there is, the more wounds accumulate, but also the more meaning accumulates. So, I don't really think of it in terms of freedom or a lack of freedom. I think of it as, you know, what are the upsides and downsides to knowing and being known so intimately that there is no hiding?、Um, and of course, with friendship, what is particularly interesting is it's so easy, in some sense, to walk away. You know, unlike sort of familial ties or professional ties, you're not bound up by this more complicated network. You don't have shared bills to pay.、Um, you know, you could simply decide, I'm not going to see you anymore, and then just cut off the other person and walk away.、Um, and I think we don't think enough about that part of friendship, about how easy it is to walk away from, and therefore how meaningful it must be that we carry on staying、um, year after year, decade after decade, even when. We know a person enough to be really irritated by all the things that have irritated us about them for 40 years,、um, of which the primary may be that we can't disguise any part of ourselves from them. Right. And I think for, for Mieko, I think too, it, it's, she has, there's a character within her book who disappears. There's a friendship that exists between a man and a woman that then he drops out of the friendship. And, and I think that,、um, but the, relation, the relationships that have lasted in that book are the female friendships, which are also equally charged in different respects, I think. So I think, Mieko, if you could talk about the role of、um, what it means to, to hold on to friendship despite the fact that there are differences and, and how that helps Fioko、um, find herself and, and, and feel stronger in herself. 女性同士の友情ってことですか We're talking,、uh, you're asking me about the friendship between the woman, right? At this point. Yes, but in how it contrasts with kind of the, the difficulty between、um, Fioko and, I'm going to mispronounce his name, Missy Tuko, the,、um, the physics professor. Fioko の友情そうですね。あの
他人とそれが恋愛でも友情でもやっぱり他者を知るっていうことなわけですよね。So,、uh, regardless of、uh, the love between a man and woman or friendship, basically the,、uh, the approach is to learn about other people. Is that right?、うん、so, what is the difference between the two? What is the difference between the two? あのリレーションシップというふうなパースペクティブがありそれで友情であれば、うん、あのなんだろうな自分の経験ね同じ同性としての経験をもとに自分を、まあ、再発見していくっていうこともありえるわけですよね。So、uh, there are you know basically two way we can go to have a friendship. The friendship Between man and a woman,、uh, it, we may be able to call it love, and then the relationship is deepened、uh, deepened by that sexual relationship, too. And then, on the other hand, the, the friendship between women or girls、uh, it is、uh, like a, we grow together and then.、Uh, We learn from each other, and then so there is a difference between these two relationships. The relationship I can tell that there is some, some kind of a reward、uh, having a relationship. Uh, fruits that we can enjoy. At the same time, we get sometimes hurt, injured. You know, our,、uh, our feeling is injured, or we get the pretty much challenging situation. ですから、あのその傷つき方、うん、あの物語、フィクションというのは、その傷つき方の,そのいろんな、なんだろうな。物語を提示することによってあの希望とかねあの喜びとかをたくさん書くというよりも傷つき方とか絶望の種類とかそういうものをあのフィクションはあの差し出すことによって、うん、人間関係というものを照らす私はその役割がすごく強いと思っています。Um... And then, you know, through my writing、uh, as a fiction writer,、uh, instead, of, instead of focusing on that, the positive side of the friendship,、uh, I put the、uh, light on how people get hurt, injured, or feel pain through the relationship. So, and then, If I can write about all、uh, different situations that people get hurt、uh, or injured or feel pain through my、uh, writing, then instead of giving a hope, but also the how people feel desperate in that situation, so that I can describe about the human being. Kamala, is there anything you'd like to add to that? or? I want to read this book. <laughs> Oh, just that you haven't read it. Okay. Yeah. I, read it, I want to add.、Um, no, I think it's, you know, I think it is so interesting the way, clearly, I think what both Nyoko and I, one of the things we're interested in is this potential for hurt, which of course comes along anytime you, you love someone.、Um, and I think it's, it's a particularly interesting thing when you've just loved someone so long that you can't imagine not doing it. Yeah. And then one day perhaps you have to start questioning that.、Yeah. Um, and I, I do think we, we possibly talk too little about the hurts of friendship and the wounds of friendship.、Um, you know, and so often a friend is sort of that sidekick who you talk to about the hurts of a romantic relationship.、Um, and I slightly wanted to invert that and, and sort of almost have the romantic relationship. Where does exist be the side note to, to the story of, of, of the friendship, which is actually the more complicated relationship? And it can be that in, in life as well.
、ね、私も本当にその通りだと思います。だからあの本当に強いね、光があるところにはやっぱり強い影が存在するので、うん、文学はやっぱりその,そのいくつものそれを差し出すあれですよねあのものだと思います。Yes, I completely agree with you. You know, when the light shed strongly, that means the shade is also strong.、Mm. So the literature is the way、uh, to explore that contrast and the differences that the human being go through.、Yeah. Tying this together with the theme that this, this panel is initially kind of framed as, I think that the idea of, of women learning to be outspoken is to talk about these issues and these power dynamics that exist outside of conventional kind of structures. And, and I want to be clear too when we talk, and in the instance of All the Lovers of the Night, the romantic relationship that exists is heterosexual. We are talking about any kind of relationship of that nature that is sexual as opposed to friendship that's outside of that sphere.、Um, and I wonder how much we both want to、um, consider and talk about the ways in which. Friendship creates room for negotiation that's unconventional. And how does that manifest itself? I think that、um, in both books, the characters are, are, are working through the fact that they, they have unconventional lives and they don't know how to um, necessarily um, accept everything that happens between that friendship. And yet they're, un- they're not going to give up on the friendship, which is something that I think. We see throughout the book that people give up on both books, that people can give up on one another very simply. And how can you talk? How can we talk about how? I'm sorry, the point of what I want to say is to, to convey to Miyako is simply that how can we look at female friendship as、um, a model for society's progress and moving forward so that we can resolve a lot of the conflicts that I would say that Camilla's book definitely brings up in terms of. Um, politics and power and workplace challenges. And I think in Mieko's book,、um, the issue of isolation and,、um, and alcoholism as well, which is something we haven't talked about as well, and that it exists in your book.、Mm. So, yes, but usual, usual, so, yes, そう友情っていうのは今私その友情のに関する質問がとても多くてその友,友情っていうのについて今考えお聞きしながら考えてたんですけれどもどうぞ yes,、uh, so yes you know、uh, talking about friendship you know just listening to that I was thinking about、uh, how the relationship、uh, you know help that progress of the society Uh, some kind of like a, a give some kind of model. Usual, you know, I'm a pariano. You don't know, can all say, oh, come on, no, this, you know, yes, you know, friendship. I believe that it's a、uh, uh, present、uh, so many possibilities that open up. Um, 私の気持ちとしては、その友情を、友情というのはこうだという分かった上で友情を書きたい気持ちはやっぱりないんですね。So,、uh, it's not my intention to、uh, present an idea of the friendship that should be this way or one way or this way or that way.Not、うん、really,、uh, you know, form like that.、うん、だから、あの、その、そこに書かれた個人の一回きりの関係あとその一回きりの体験それを,を書くことにしたいすべてのラベリングとかカテゴリーをやっぱり逸脱していく、うん、そのものがやっぱりあの書ければいいなっていつも思っています。So the, no, my intention is just,、uh, you know, I don't want to、uh, confirm into a certain way、uh, that the friendship should be. So, that the, the breaking that kind of barrier and then、uh, freely that、uh, you know, we should feel and experience the friendship uh, uh, throughout their lives. 
one thing I think about is is how friendship. You know, it, it, I'm look thinking specifically about the differences between how friendship works and how I would say you know power works in in work environments and in politics. I feel like the crisis that truly comes to your head in your novel, Kamala, is is when um, Saha realizes that Miriam has used money for influence. And I think that truly shocks her in a way that she could be able to live with a lot of the differences before, but money being a, a, a mode of communication and negotiation is something she can't reconcile. And, and I think that that's what I'm trying to get at is, is, is this idea that is friendship a model for how we should live in the world in terms of having to be confronted with difference and work it through personally, as opposed to using outside um, influences? I mean, I think we need to start by acknowledging that, that what works in friendship works in friendship, that it's a very specific kind of relationship and world and that you can't necessarily transplant it to another environment because a friendship relies on slowly building trust and a lot of time together and intimacy um, in a way that I don't think you necessarily want um, in every professional environment. But I do think it is very significant to the novel that both these girls grew up in a world where power is very male. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it's set in Pakistan in 1988. It's the end of a military dictatorship. And it, it sort of that that early section ends just as Benazir Bhutto has become prime minister, this 35 year old woman. And you have both these young girls, Zara and Mariam, suddenly feeling that the world has changed and that girls can be anything and and that therefore they can be anything. And yet, having said that, their experience of power is still so male. Um, and when they grow up, I think this is also relevant is that they they become powerful themselves. But there, particularly for Mariam, you know, her image of, of what power looks like is very masculine and patriarchal. And Zara, it's not quite as true because she did know this human rights lawyer, this woman in Pakistan, so she has a slightly different way. But the question of how do you navigate power as women? Do you do it in the same way as men do? Do you try and find a new, a new way to be powerful, I think that's quite central um, to the way they're living their lives. Mm. So that is a very interesting point, and it, it is an issue of a feminism too, as well. So, so the you know let's say the you know the things that the woman can uh, men can carry out or achieve uh if a woman want to do the similar way or same way to achieve some kind of uh power position that is questionable to me Dozo. はい、どうですね。そう。で、あの、そう、やっぱりね、今私がすごく強く思うのは、あの、みんな無力な赤ん坊として生まれてきて、みんな体が弱って死んでいくわけですよ。みんなまた弱い存在に戻っていく。はい
弱くなっていく必ず無力な存在になってしまうということをどの瞬間人生の瞬間もそれ絶対忘れちゃいけないと思うんですよね。And the one thing we shouldn't forget about、uh, in my view is you know we yes certainly there is a point that we feel very weak and then how we gonna embarrass embrace that feeling how we gonna、uh, strive from there So, we shouldn't forget about we are the existence of a weak creature.、Uh, uh, So, if、um, as a woman、uh, present the word, what the、uh, uh, power means to a woman, it's basically, I believe, that is a weakness. It's a power of a woman. So, it's or the weakness is、uh, strongly associated with the power or strength of a woman. I would say vulnerability and, 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 and keeping a consciousness of, of the vulnerability of others and, and keeping that idea of protection in mind is something that friendship holds dear. And I think also is something in both of your books that I think the characters that carries them along throughout the course of the book and remains a sense of continuity throughout.、Um, Kamala, would you like to comment on that, please? No, but I, mean, I think you know, one of the things.、Um, Certainly, within Best of Friends, is there are these women and they, they are occupying these powerful roles in society,、um, but their private selves are something else, and there are those old wounds. And, and there's also a sense, you know, they're in their 40s, and, and they do have a sense that before long they're going to enter the next phase of their life. And what happens actually at the point where you leave behind the working world, you leave behind the roles of power. Um, what is left and what is important? I think that, yeah, I, I think both books leave you with a lot of questions and a lot of, you know, to, much to consider in terms of what we are left with after kind of we have to reconcile with the, the kind of the larger crux of our adult life and spent coping with politics, coping with, off, with、um, work, and also the negotiation of family, which is also something we haven't had an opportunity to talk about so much.、Um, but I think that. that I, I mean, I, was the, I found your book, Kamala, to, to surprise me constantly. And I, and I love that so much about it that I, I did find that, in spite of the fact that, you know, and I think it reminded me that friendship is always something that is surprising, no matter how deeply you know someone、um, over such a poor, long course of time. They're the people who can also surprise you the most often because they're able to kind of do. Um, perform that dance of, of knowledge and, and, and understanding the, 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 the、uh, things that, that sort of that you refuse to look at or, or try to avoid.、Um, and I think Mieko's novel as well deals with friends who, and that's another thing I wanted to talk about is this idea of reserving judgment within friendship as well,、um, that it's a space where people can be their most true selves without fear of retribution. And、um, I think that that's, that, that, you know, for me, I found that, that very liberating to read a book that centered around that as kind of the arc of a book, as opposed to achievement in a very conventional manner. Right.、That's、I feel like we're, and I, I feel like we probably should be wrapping up soon. But、um, is there any kind of final co comment you would like to make, Kamala or, or Mieko? So, this is it. えっと、質問があってカミラさんにあの私たちはその作家のバイオグラフィーっていうものがありますよね例えばどの言語で書いてるか私とマイナーな言語なので,で例えばその人種とかねそのどこに住んでるかとかどこの言葉使うとかで,でそれで例えば私が書くものっていうのはどうしても現代日本を代表したものとして読まれることが多いんですね。うん、読まれますよね、そういうふうに。うん
Uh, so, you know, I have a question to Kamera and, and talking about uh, biography as a writer. So the different languages or race or, you know, what kind of language do we use? Yeah. Uh, so in my case, you know, it's a minor language and then, but uh, I, my language is basically uh, the current Japanese, current, uh, almost like a, you know, younger generation's current Japanese. That's what I'm focusing on. So uh, what about your position in that uh, language area? Um, it's a complicated question because I grew up in Pakistan with English as my first language. So that's really the only language I've ever had the facility to read and write in. But it's a, I was growing up in a country where most of the population couldn't read and write in it. So even now the books I'm writing, there's only a very tiny percentage of Pakistan's population who can read these novels, a lot of which have been about Pakistan. And I think that creates a, a sort of odd relationship between you and the place you've come from. Um, and, you know, the books have been translated into many languages, including Japanese, um, but none of the other languages of Pakistan be beyond English. Um, so I have a sort of different um, way of thinking about language and, and, you know, how I write. Um, it is a joy to me when the books do get translated. It's like the, these new versions of your of your books exist out in the world and you have no idea really what they are or who they'll reach. And sometimes I, I wonder if some of my translators write better versions of my books than I do. うん。で、その自分のその作家としての背景みたいなもの、当事者性ですよね。そういったものを通してその作品の強さとかその文学性みたいなものがセットで語られることがやっぱり学ばれないと思うんですよ。それに対しては何か思われることありますか何か自分が常にその国とかその何て言うのかなそのまあ何て言うのかなどこの出身であるかっていうことを背負って自分の小説っていうものが読まれてしまう特に海外海外においてはそのことに対しての何かあの考えと
um, exist as interpreters between cultures or explainers of a culture. Um, and we're expected to carry these heavy stories with us all the time. Um, and having said that, I think when we sit down to write, we simply write the books that are in us to come out. Um, but I do, I do in some sense envy you that, you know, you are writing to an audience directly I and mean, you're writing in Japan to a young audience um, who is, who knows your world. Um, and there isn't that question of, that large question of how you're being interpreted and what preconceptions they're bringing to it um, in quite the same way. うん。でも、そうだね。その日本もやっぱりみんな日本文学ってものにね、期待してるものがやっぱりあるんですよね。私もやっぱりそれをあの、ブレスンでアグスでは、あの、貧困があるっていうことをやっぱりみんな驚